The subject of today's message is the truth about the Federal Reserve. The truth about the Federal Reserve. Before I read notes from that, I'd like to read a passage of scripture from the Husea in the book of Ani, page 54, section number seven. Here's what it says. Small gifts return greater and what is replaced brings abundance. The wise live off the house of the fool. Got that? The wise live off the house of the fool. Protect what is yours and you will always find it. Be watchful of what you own lest you end up as a beggar. Right. One who is always idle amounts to nothing. But one who is diligent is honored. The biggest threat to America is a group of terrorists. But they're not Arabs. These terrorists are conducting something called financial warfare in America, and not only in America, in other countries around the world as well, possibly leading to a global financial meltdown. These terrorists are a small, covert, clandestine, London, European, and American-based organizations operating in the United States as a supposed government agency. All right. Notice I said a supposed government agency. They're called the Federal Reserve. The fact that the President of the United States the Vice President of the United States and every Senator of the United States and every Congressman of the United States, they make it appear as though the Federal Reserve is a government agency when in truth it is a private corporation. That's right. That's right. That's right. The fact that all of these politicians in, in Washington know this about the Federal Reserve should let us know that it is the most dangerous terrorist organization. And they're willing to go to any extent to control the United States government. I just stated, I'll say it again, the Federal Reserve is a privately controlled corporation. It is not a United States government agency. Check this out, y'all. Something called the Constitution of the United States, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution of the United States. Here's what it says. It says, Congress, and I quote, Congress shall have the power to coin money or create money and regulate the value thereof. That's what the Constitution of the United States says. It says, Congress shall have the power to create or make or coin money and regulate the value of it. Today, however, the United States is not making money. When I say making, I mean actually creating it, actually printing it. The United States is not doing that. Scratch that. 
The United States Treasury is doing it, but not for the United States. It's doing it for the Federal Reserve. Let me give you the history here right quick. The Federal Reserve began with approximately 300 people or banks that became owners of the Federal Reserve System. They make up an international banking cartel of wealth beyond comparison. The Federal Reserve collects billions of dollars. What did I just say? Yes. Billions of dollars in interest. Not the principal, in interest every year. And what they do is they distribute the profits that they make off of this interest to its shareholders, which are rich white people in England. The United States Congress illegally gave the Federal Reserve the right to print money through the Treasury, check this out now, at no interest or cost to the Federal Reserve. Now, if you don't mind me, let me, let me, let me, let me show you. Here you have this little entity over here called the Federal Reserve. Here you have an entity called the United States of America. And the Federal Reserve does not even have their own printing presses. They use the printing presses or the mint of the United States Treasury and makes the United States print up all this paper money that now becomes what is called Federal Reserve notes. Don't take my word for it. Look at the dollars in your pocket. Yes. Right across the top, it says a Federal Reserve note. Yes, sir. Now, that's some deep stuff because the United States Treasury printed up this paper, gives it back to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve now takes this paper and distributes it to banks all over America and then turns around and charges the United States interest on every piece of paper yes, yes. that it hands out. Yes. <laughs> now, if you and I did that, we'd go to jail. Right. Yeah. We, but they'd lock us up in a, in a minute because we took something that didn't cost us anything to print distributed it back to the people who printed it and then will charge them interest on it. That's some deep stuff. And then after doing that, the Federal Reserve turns around and buys the debt with money printed on a printing press. And you, and notice how I'm saying that, I'm saying that very intentionally. You, I didn't say we, I said you. 40% of your income tax return yes. every year yes. goes to pay the Federal Reserve yes. the debt that they are now holding over this country. Who actually owns the Federal Reserve? Who owns it? I'll tell you. The 12 central banks, Rothschilds. That word ain't in the Bible, Pastor. I know it ain't. That's y'all problem. You've been so biblicized that you ain't know what's going on. The Rothschilds Bank of London, the Warburg Bank of Hamburg, the Rothschilds Bank of Berlin, Lehman Brothers of New York. Everybody say your American Express car. That's who owns American Express, y'all, Lehman Brothers. Lazard Brothers of Paris, Kuhn Lloyd Bank of New York, Israel Moses Saif Banks of Italy, Goldman and Sachs, y'all heard of Sachs Fifth Avenue, yeah. Goldman Sachs of New York, Warburg Bank of Amsterdam, and the Chase Manhattan Bank. Oh. These 
bankers are connected to what is called banking houses in London. Now, let me give you some more names here. First National Bank of New York, James Stillman, National City Bank, New York, Mary Harmon, National Bank of Commerce, New York, A.D. Juliet, Hanover National Bank of New York. Here's a name you might have heard before, Jacob Schiff. Yes. Yes. For those who don't know it, that's the man who started the NAACP, y'all. A Jew. He also started the Anti-Defamation League. A Jew, Jacob Schiff. Chase National Bank, New York, Thomas Ryan, Paul Warburg, William Rockefeller, Levi Morton, and y'all ain't none of these black folk. None of these, not one of these are black people. M.T. Pine, George F. Baker, Percy Pine, Mrs. G.F. St. George, J.W. Sterling, Catherine, Catherine St. George, H.P. Davison, J.P. Morgan, Equitable Life Insurance Company. Uh. Edith Braval T. Baker. These are your owners of what is called the Federal Reserve. They don't care about you. They have no interest in you whatsoever. Now, how did all this happen? How many of y'all have ever heard of President Woodrow Wilson? Yes. Well, just before his candidacy and his, his term as president, the Federal Reserve had been trying to manipulate themselves into the operations of the then known United States, even though it was almost bankrupt already. And what happened is a group of bankers, and see this is how they do it. These rich folk who I just named for y'all, who all come from rich families, what they did is they funded the political campaigns of Woodrow Wilson and senators and congressmen who were in office at the time. What they threatened to do, and see this is how they do it, if, if, they, if you act like you don't want to do what they told you to do, then they'll let you know we're going to put our money behind your opponent. Mm. Yes, yes. So you are sure to lose the next election. Yes. They don't want to lose, so what happened is during the Christmas break, a senator in 1913, his name was Nelson Aldrich. Everybody say Nelson Aldrich. Nelson Aldrich. Well, Pastor, that mean that who, who is he? I tell you, Nelson Aldrich was the grandfather of the Rockefeller family. Yes. The maternal grandfather of the Rockefellers. Yes. See again, they're thinking down the road. Yes. Nelson Aldrich, being a senator, pushed the Federal Reserve Act through Congress during the Christmas break while much of Congress was on vacation. Mm -hmm. And when Congress came back from vacation, well, it was a law now. The Federal Reserve Act has been passed and the Federal Reserve is now in charge of the money of this country. <laughs> then in the 1930s, the Federal Reserve started buying up the media. In case y'all don't know this, let me educate you here. The Federal Reserve owns ABC. The Federal Reserve owns NBC. The Federal Reserve owns CBS. The Federal Reserve now owns BET. Y'all getting this? Turner Communications. Federal Reserve. CNN. Federal Reserve. So when y'all listen to stuff on television, what do you think you're going to hear? What the Federal Reserve wants you to hear. There were some presidents named Lincoln, Jackson, and Kennedy. These three presidents decided to do something about 
the Federal Reserve's control over the United States. Lincoln said we can print our own money. Lincoln died in a theater. Kennedy passed executive order to print our own money. Shortly thereafter, he died. You see, brothers and sisters, here's how it happens. When the, when the government runs into a deficit, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, prints up dollars through the Treasury, buys the debt, and the dollars are circulated into the economy with interest on each note. How many of y'all remember the $2 bill when they came out? Y'all yeah. remember those? Yeah. They weren't printed by the Federal Reserve. That's why on the $2 bill, it said across the top, United States note, a silver certificate, which was redeemable at any bank or Federal Reserve bank for silver in the amount of that particular amount. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. In other words, the money that the government printed was redeemable for gold or silver. The money you got now, it don't say it's redeemable for anything. Right. Take it out and read it. It ain't redeemable for nothing. <laughs> you think it's powerful because the Federal Reserve is allowing you to continue to use their notes. But if the Federal Reserve right now should cancel all those notes, you might as well use it in your fireplace. Because it will mean absolutely nothing. The Federal Reserve wants to see how many of y'all got their notes. Because see, a lot of y'all said, well, I ain't going to let them know how many of their notes I had. Okay, so guess what they did? They fixed y'all. They got a little metal strip in their notes now. You can hold it up to the light and see the little metal strip going through it which they can detect from a satellite in space. So hiding your little pieces of paper in your basement somewhere or in your mattress somewhere don't mean a thing. Now here's what's deep about it. The Fed controls the monetary system of the United States of America and other parts of the world too. But being that it's a privately owned corporation with a lot of power, guess what? Not since it has been formed has it ever filed a tax return. It has never paid taxes, and they have never been audited. Even though congressmen and senators have requested that they be audited, it never took place. There was a congressman named Wright Patman Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Banking. And for 40 years, he was in office. And for 20 of those 40 years, he tried to have the Federal Reserve put out of business. Never happened. Congressman Henry Gonzalez, Chairman of the Banking Committee, tried to have the Federal Reserve put out of business. Never happened. If the people of the United States do not recognize and root out this small but deadly group of terrorists, guess what? The people of the United States will not only lose their money, they will lose their homes, they will lose their property, they will lose their jobs, their wealth, and, and suffer hardships like you've never known before. Now, why is that? Because the Federal Reserve, brothers and sisters, is currently the biggest threat to the lives of Americans. They put in a disaster by design, if y'all remember that message, yes, yes. to 
bankrupt the country even more than it already is. They crashed some planes into what is called the World Trade Center. Now here's how this goes. The Patsy, y'all know what I mean about the Patsy? The, the person that they had already set up to take the blame for their disaster by design was somebody named Osama Bin Laden. And they also went and got another patsy named Saddam Hussein. You see, these men had nothing at all whatsoever to do with the World Trade Center tragedy. That's right, that's right, that's right. It was a Federal Reserve operation yes. to create something called war. That's right. Because there's big money in war. That's right. That's right. That's right. George Bush, Tony Blair, uh -huh. Ariel Sharon, and just about every other leader of a nation are the puppets, believe it or not, for the Federal Reserve. Yes. I don't know if y'all remember or not, but shortly after George Bush stole the election, yes. Yes. I'll say it again, he stole the election, his first order of business was a meeting with Alan Greenspan. Yes. Soon as he became the president, his first item on his agenda was to sit down with Alan Greenspan. Now, I know some of y'all say, Pat, who's Alan Greenspan? <laughs> See how biblicized you have been? <laughs> Alan Greenspan at the time was the chairman of the Federal Reserve. In other words, when George Bush became president, they had already planned this war years earlier, but they needed money to go to war. Am I making sense, y'all? Since we didn't have money to go to war, George Bush told Alan Greenspan, listen, man, I need y'all to print up some more paper. Alan Greenspan said, not a problem. Now y'all already trillions of dollars in debt to us, but not a problem. <laughs> Alan Greenspan now calls up the United States the Treasury and issues an order for billions of dollars to be printed. Not money, dollars. <laughs> Let me say it again. Not money, dollars. So that you'll know, brothers and sisters, in the mind of the Constitution of the United States, money is silver and gold. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Got me? That's what money is. Silver and gold. That's why the elders in the old day treasured them little, they, they treasured them little silver dollars they had. They keep, no, oh, I'm keeping my silver dollars. They, they, you know, it's better to have 10 silver dollars than a whole bunch of paper that don't mean nothing. All right. Because the standard for money is still silver and gold. <clears throat> Print up all this paper to finance what? War. We got to send troops over. That's got to be paid for. We got to feed the troops. That has to be paid for. We got to charge them for every roll of toilet paper. That's got to be paid for. You name it. War is the biggest commodity for the power brokers. But now here's how the Federal Reserve works. Federal Reserve not only printed up paper for us, they printed up paper for Iraq too. Yes. yes. You hear what I'm saying? They printed up paper for Afghanistan. Yes. So-called terrorist groups enables the Fed to create what's called a cheap enemy. And they use this as an expense for, excuse for defense spending. Think with 
me, brothers and sisters, how you, have you ever wondered why there never seems to be enough billions of dollars for health care? I mean, come on. If you can print up billions of dollars that don't cost nothing to print up for war, why can't you print up billions of dollars for health care? Why can't you print up billions of dollars for the elderly? Yes, yes. Why can't you print up billions of dollars for the homeless? Yes, yes. They have no desire to do that. Yes. It's about war. Everybody say financial warfare. Financial warfare. Other weapons that the Federal Reserve uses in their silent arsenal of financial warfare on the people of the world are three things. Everybody say debt, debt. Credit, credit, and interest. And interest. Those three things, y'all. Debt, credit, and interest. Right. How many of y'all fall in one of those three categories? If not all three of them. <laughs> exactly. By keeping individuals and governments and businesses in constant debt, that accumulates extraordinary amounts of interest. The Fed makes untold billions of dollars on this interest. And the national debt, brothers and sisters, is the Fed's silent weapon of mass destruction. Yes. Right. Now follow what I'm saying. Now check out how this thing works. It's a trap that the only way we can be delivered from it is by appropriating the law. How many times have you heard me say that? Yes. There is a way out of this. Yes, there is. And it's already written in Congress. In the Constitution, in, in the minutes for the Federal, Federal Reserve Act, it states that the United States can buy itself back from the Federal Reserve for $450 billion. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. I'm sorry, scratch that, wrong. Million, $450 million. That is not a lot of money. So why don't the United States buy itself back? Why don't the United States buy its freedom? Because if the United States buys its freedom from the Federal Reserve, guess what, y'all? You'll be free. Yes. And if you are free, the power brokers can't be in control and they don't get paid. Like I said, somebody tried to do that. His name was John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Check this out. Everybody say this. Parents, say it, parents. Parents. Patriae. Patria. Write this down. I want y'all to write this down. And now let me let me just be sure I'm not wasting your time. How many of you have ever heard of that that phrase before? Good. Not any hands are going up. Good. I want you to go look it up and see what it says for yourself. I told y'all about Black's Law Dictionary, right? Parents Patria is spelled P-A-R-E-N-S. The second word, patriae, is spelled P-A-T-R-I-A-E. P-A-T-R-I-A-E. And that is pronounced patriae. Now, that's Latin, which means the government as your parent. <laughs> Parents... Patriae. It's a doctrine, it's a law in Black's Law Dictionary which the Crown of England uses as their rule of thumb. Y'all following me? It means the government as your parent. Now under the doctrine of parents patriae, the government acts on behalf of a child or mentally ill person. It refers to the state as the guardian 
over people who are incompetent. The United States government and the Federal Reserve has declared through the Emergency War Powers Act of 1933 that the citizens of the United States of America are incompetent. This is what I mean by knowing the law, brothers and sisters. In 1933, this country went bankrupt. Right. Yes. And when they went bankrupt, just like when you filed bankruptcy, your assets are turned over to a trustee. That's right. Well, the assets of the United States had to be turned over to a trustee. Guess who that trustee was? The Federal Reserve. Follow how deep this thing goes. The Federal Reserve agreed with a cor one corporation made a deal with another corporation. This is some deep stuff. In case y'all didn't know it, the United States of America is also a corporation. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. It's a business. That's what this is about. Look at the person next to you and say, it ain't personal. It ain't it's, personal. Business. it's business. That's what this is about. One corporation called the Federal Reserve became the trustee of the assets of another corporation called the United States. Now, what were the assets of the United States? The people. That's it. The United States didn't have a boat. The United States didn't have a house. The assets of the United States are the people in the United States. Now I'm gonna drop something on you that's gonna blow your mind, y'all. That's why the 14th Amendment was created. It wasn't created to make us black folk citizens. The 14th Amendment was created for the sake of turning the assets of the United States over to the Federal Reserve. Because the 14th Amendment states that the subjects, quote, subjects of the United States become the collateral for the debt owed to the Federal Reserve. Y'all hearing me? So it ain't about black folk being citizens. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Now, understanding this, the worst thing you can be is a citizen of this country. Because every citizen of the United States is liable for the debt of the United States. According to the law, the Constitution of the United States states that the assets of the United States of America are now under the control of the Federal Reserve. Which means you are a slave. If you are a citizen of this country, as long as this country is in debt, you are a slave. I'm gonna make a sense, y'all. Am I opening your eyes to something? There was a senator Representative James Trafficant of Ohio. And you don't have to take my word, you can pull this up by reading the United States Congressional Record, March 17, 1993. Volume 33, page H1303. Here's what Speaker Representative James Trafficant said in addressing the House, and I quote him. Here's what he said, Mr. Speaker, I'm reading his, the transcript here. We are here now in chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history, the United States government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. He said that March 17, 1993. He got up to talk to Congress about the 
criminal activity of the manipulating of the funds of this country by the Federal Reserve. That was in 1993. Well, guess what, y'all? April of 2002, he was convicted of 10 charges, including bribery, racketeering, and fraud. Now, what did he do? He was a representative. He was a politician. And how he got in office was the Federal Reserve put their money behind him. And he turned around and decided to speak out against them. So what happened, see this is how they do stuff, y'all. The money they put behind uh, a representative trafficking, they put it behind him in such a way to where if, he know, if he's not a good boy, they can always say that they, he took a bribe. He's guilty of fraud. So because he spoke out against the Federal Reserve, they turned around and their donations weren't donations anymore. All of a sudden it was bribes that he accepted and he was convicted for. That's what I mean, y'all, when I say don't give your enemy any ammunition to come back and shoot you with later. This government was dissolved in the Emergency Banking Act of March 9th, 1933. And guess what's really deep about it? At that time, they declared the abrogation of gold and silver. The United States was no longer a sovereign authority, but it now became the property of the Federal Reserve. It's essential, brothers and sisters, that we comprehend the distinction between real money and paper money. Or maybe I should say a paper money substitute. Follow this. You cannot get rich by accumulating paper money substitutes. All right, all right, all right. Come on, now. Okay. I don't care how many $100 bills you wrap in a rubber band. <laughs> you can't get rich by accumulating it. Now, some of y'all so broke that you're saying, let me find out for myself. <laughs> Just, let, just give me a nice stack of the paper money substitute. Okay? We the people no longer have any money. You hear people say, child, I ain't got no money. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. You don't have no money. You may have, now I'm going to be honest with you, for those of you who still have some silver certificates, you got money. That's right. Some of y'all got some, that old money that's called silver certificates, the, the collector's kit and everything. Believe it or not, according to that piece of paper, that is a contract for payment. And if you look at it, it says that this is legal tender yes. and is negotiable for it's equal amount in silver or in gold at any Federal Reserve Bank. It actually says it on the paper. But what you have now, let's see, what does it say? Let me pull out something. Let me pull, just pull out a Federal Reserve note and read it. And there's a little notice there on it. And it says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. It doesn't say that it is redeemable. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Those of you who have a silver certificate, you look on it and actually, you got one? An old one? Let me have it. See, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thank you. So folks say, y'all, he making that up. Let's see what this thing says. Now, oh, this, now this, is, this is money. You got another one over there. There you go. Now, this is money. It's only a dollar, but it's money. Check this out. If the Federal Reserve should cancel out everything right now, this dollar would be worth more than this $50 bill. 
That's right. Come on, guys. Because the Federal Reserve right now say we're calling in our notes. They are now worthless. This is just a piece of paper. But this piece of paper has a, some words on it that makes it a contract. And the, it says, uh, actually, this one, the, where's it? Da, 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 da. You know what? They dipped all out of this one, too. It says silver certificate across the top. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, here it is at the bottom. At the bottom. It says one dollar. Okay, the United States of America. Uh, this certifies that the, there is on deposit in the treasury of the United States of America one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. That's money. This is money. That's right. If yours don't say that, that ain't redeemable. Y'all want that back, don't you? <laughs> yep. In other words, brothers and sisters, the dollars that we have is just a reminder of the debt that this country's in. And you cannot pay a debt with a debt. That's like trying to use your credit card to make the payment that's due on your credit card. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the condition that the Federal Reserve has us in. Now, I told y'all there was a guy who decided that he wanted to do something about all this. His name was John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Yes, sir. <laughs> On June 4th, what day did I just say? June 4th. June 4th, 1963. A little known attempt was made to strip the Federal Reserve Bank of its power to loan money to the government at interest. On that day, President John F. Kennedy signed Executive Order, write this order down now, Executive Order 11110, four ones and a zero. John Kennedy issued Presidential Executive Order 11110 that returned the United States government the power to issue currency without going through the Federal Reserve. Now follow how well this is now. Check this out. As powerful as the Kennedy family is, they weren't powerful enough to let him get away. with what he did. By signing this executive order, it meant that the United States is now going to print its own money, like the bill you have there, without going to the Federal Reserve. So Federal Reserve ain't going to be making no more money off of the United States by printing up paper. Y'all following me? Well, <laughs> that's some deep stuff. Kennedy's order gave the Treasury the power to issue silver certificates against any silver bullion, silver, or standard silver dollars in the Treasury. This meant that for every ounce of silver in the United States Treasury vault, the government could introduce new money into circulation. <laughs> Kennedy brought nearly $4.3 billion in United States notes, not Federal Reserve notes, but in United States notes into circulation. $4.3 billion. With the stroke of a pen. <laughs> President Kennedy was on his way to putting the Federal Reserve out of business. Simply because he was the President of the United States just signing an executive order. And from now on, we'll print our own money. 
And the thing is, if enough of these silver certificates were to come into circulation, they would have eliminated the demand for Federal Reserve notes. Well, Executive Order 11110 could have prevented the national debt from getting to where it is today. But President Kennedy, while riding through Dallas, Texas, was shot by the driver of his limousine. Did y'all hear what I said? <laughs> Not Lee Harvey Oswald. He was the patsy. If you look at the Zaberta film, I'm say Z thank you. I always get that tongue tied on that. The film, the, the real film. And my, what I'll do is I'll bring it in one day so y'all can see it. You actually see the limousine driver with his left hand reach over his right shoulder yes. and blow the back of President Kennedy's head out. Think for a moment. Let me just go here for a moment, y'all. Let's, let's think. Let's think for a moment. The shot in the grassy knoll was a distraction. Pop! Everybody looked. While everybody's looking, the driver shoots the president. That's why his head went straight back. Y'all got me? Anybody who knows anything about forensics, okay, here, his head went straight back. If he had got shot from the side, from the grassy knoll, or from the books depository building, his head would have went this way, to the right or to the left. His head went straight back because the impact of the projectile was in his face, blowing the back of his head out. Why do you think Jacqueline Kennedy tried, Kennedy tried to climb up out that back seat? A 45 had just went off in her face. She said, let me up out of here. Yes. And if you notice after that, she never uttered another word because they had threatened the safety of her children if she yes. said a word about it. Yes. We're talking about a wicked government here, people. Yes. President Kennedy was assassinated and President Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as the next president of the United States. And guess what, y'all? His first order of business was to cease and recall every silver certificate that had been printed by President Kennedy and return control of the printing of the money back over to the Federal Reserve. And guess what? Now, here's what's deep about it. Even though his first order of business was to cease the printing of silver certificates and recall those that had been distributed, I don't know how y'all still, still got y'all. This is a good thing. Because Johnson called, did a recall. Even at that, Executive Order 11110 still exists today. Which means that every president since then and the present president right now has the power to at the stroke of a pen put the Federal Reserve out of business. Why won't they do it? Scared of the limo driver. Right on, brother. Right on. You got it. I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Scared of limo driver. Now what? That's a good point. You know what? What's so good about that? Because the limo driver was Secret Service. Yes. Secret Service, it's their duty to protect the president. Now that's some deep stuff. When those who are supposed to protect you yes. are the ones that's ready to take your life on orders. Yes. Yes. <sighs> 
and sisters, as of today, I'm doing real good. I've got one more page to go after this, and I got 30 minutes. I'm doing real good. I'll be finished before then. As of today, to date this message, November 13th, 2005, the national debt as of today. Now, I'm going to tell y'all how you can find out what the national debt is. See, you know what amazes me about some of y'all say, Pastor Hayden, you got all this knowledge. Y'all, I ain't no different than you. I'm a researcher. That's the only difference. Okay? You can find out what the national debt is, and you can monitor it every day. Just go to Google.com and type in these words, national debt. <laughs> Real simple. Go to google.com and type in national debt. And the first website that comes up out of the entire list will be what is called the national debt clock. Mm -hmm. Click that on and it tells you what e every day it changes. Okay? And you can see what the current national debt is as of that particular day. As of this day, when I checked it this morning, the national debt of the United States of this country is eight trillion, eighty-four billion, five hundred and forty-eight million, four hundred and sixty-one thousand. $621.07. Right down to the penny. Now follow this. We're talking a little over um, a little over eight trillion dollars. Now here's the now here's where it gets here's where it gets stupid. Because the government went bankrupt, okay? And as a part of the bankruptcy agreement between the United States government and the Federal Reserve, the assets of the United States are now under the control of the trustee called the Federal Reserve. Y'all with me? There is a debt to the Federal Reserve of a little over a little over eight trillion dollars. The assets of the United States are the people of the United States. The current population of the United States as of today is 297 million 693,000 and two people. Now, of course, more have been born since I've done this, this morning. But as of earlier today, that's what the population of this country is. For those of you who filled out the census forms. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? I'll say it again, and I hope y'all catch the hint. For those of you who filled out the census forms, Child, I got to fill out the census form. I got to fill out the census form. <laughs> now, here's the problem. Eight children, eight trillion, eighty-four billion, five million forty-eight. I'm sorry. Yeah, five hundred forty-eight million, four hundred sixty-one thousand six hundred twenty-one dollars and seven cent, divided by. 297 million, 693,002 people. So in the mind of the government, in the mind of the Federal Reserve, every last one of these people are in debt to the Federal Reserve, and this is legal, $27,157.07. If you are a citizen of the United States of America, you owe the Federal Reserve 
if they should call in their note right now, you owe the Federal Reserve $27,157.33. That's their calculation. Now, in the minds of these rich white folk, some of y'all ain't worth that much. Because you don't even have that much in assets. So their answer to your worthlessness is kill them. Get rid of them because they are causing us to lose money. Y'all following this? Yes, yes. The national debt has continued to increase. An average of, check this out, y'all, it increases $3.48 billion a day. I'll say that again. $3.48 billion a day, the national debt increases to the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Now, if we had a president who really cared about this country yes. more than he cares about his own life, yes. he'd sign that executive order yes. and put a stop to this mess. Perhaps JFK's assassination was a warning to every future president. Yes. Don't mess with our money. Now, as I draw near to the end of this lecture, I'm faced with a question concerning our present state of affairs as blacks in America. When George Bush became the president of this country, we were already several trillions of dollars in debt to the Fed. And yet, as soon as he became president, he sat down with Alan Greenspan and increased the debt yes, yes. to finance his personal war in Iraq. Yes, yes. Bush needed several billion dollars for the war. Last November, brothers and sisters, last November of 2004, the United, check this out. Now, let's just look at this for a moment. Last November of last year, the United States Senate voted to increase the federal debt limit to $18.8 .8 trillion. Does this make any sense? You're already trillions of dollars in debt. So the United States Senate holds a meeting and approves increasing the debt limit to $18.8 .8 trillion. Why? Now maybe I'm missing something here. I'm, so I'm not used to having money, you know, so I don't really understand how this works. But why add onto the debt that you already have by trillions of dollars? Now, see, I can see it if you have been paying off the debt. But if, if you already owe me some money, follow this now. I mean, the, you know, I mean, I may be able to, be able to get a cough up a hundred or two, you know, to loan out. And if you don't pay me back, 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 back. You can forget asking me for another hundred. Ask my daughter, she'll tell you. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. When you know you can't even pay your current debt, why are you getting deeper in it? Say that. Yes. What's even deeper still is why would the Fed, or why would the Federal Reserve agree? to lending trillions more on top of the trillions that you already owe. These are the questions.
questions we need to be asking Africans in America. Bush continues deficit spending. Not just at record levels, but at record shattering levels. The new debt incurred every day, quite simply, y'all, I have to tell you straight up like it is, it is not repayable. There's no way in the world that this country will ever pay off its debt to the Federal Reserve. Now, you say, I, I, don't, I don't believe the government would, would put us in that kind of predicament. <laughs> That's because you've been biblicized. You so biblicized that you think that you're going to be raptured out of here. Look at the person next to you and say, you still here? How much worse does it have to get? Well, the Bible say that locusts are going to come up out the bottomless pit with, with, with a man's face and teeth like a lion and hair like a woman. <laughs> that ain't happened yet, so we must be all right. <laughs> you are so biblicized. Yes, yes. <laughs> the locusts have been here for a long time, y'all. They're called combat helicopters. That's another lecture in itself. Let me show you, let me use an analogy because, see this, now you have to help me. My mind is limited, very limited at this point. Very limited at this point. But it just doesn't make sense to my finite mind that you would continuously pile on top of the debt you already owe a whole lot more debt unless you already know that something's going to happen where you ain't got to pay it back. Y'all with me? Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. One day, this man came, had an appointment with my mom. I just so happened to be in New Jersey at the time. I'm so glad I was there. This man made an appointment with my mother, and he was from this company called Transamerica. And he came in and he, got, he got, told my mom on the phone that they have a program where she can borrow as much money as she wants to and never has to pay it back. My mama lost her mind. Come on over. Come on, come on. Come on, where you want to come on? Come on, come on. I can, wait, let me be sure you said that. I can borrow this money, you don't have to pay it back? Nope, you don't have to pay it back. That, that made my mom real excited. So when the man came, I just so happened to be at the house. And my mom was getting ready to sign the papers. And I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, mom. There's something ain't right about this. Right. Something ain't right about this. So when it began to challenge the dude, come to find out it was something called reverse mortgage. Yes. Okay, which means that we'll give you, now see, the, the value on my mom's house was over five million dollars. So they knew she wasn't about to spend that kind of money in the time she had left on this planet. So the way he really suckered her in was, you can have, borrow as much money as you want. That just made her day, man. All she saw was more, more mink coats and, and <laughs> You know, I could just really live it up in these final years of my life. I said, Mom, it's not that simple. What this means is something up to this. And come to find out, the program was, the reason why you ain't got to pay it back is because I'm going to take your house, lady. Yes. 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 When you die. Right. Right. Yes. They don't tell them about that. No, they don't tell you that part. Not like that. They, you, they say it in more diplomatic terms, but they, I'm going to take this house. We gonna, this house is going to belong to Transamerica when you die. Yes. Which, is, which is valued at a whole lot more than you'll ever borrow yes. Yes. in the few years you got left. See, they only approach old people. Because they know they ain't got but over what? 
over 60. So they know they ain't got that many more years. You see what I'm saying? Could it be something like that here? Yes, yes. Could it be something like, sure, George, we'll print up the paper for you. Because we know you ain't going to get to pay it back. So who's going to suffer? George Bush, daddy will be dead and gone. Yes. Who's going to suffer? Yes. Russell the third back there, the little boy who stood up and said, it's my birthday today. Yes. Our little black children, that's who's going to suffer. Right. Yes. Because we'll be gone yes. and they will be back in slavery yes. to some rich white folk in England. Yes. So every you work for mama everything you work for daddy will be confiscated legally y'all it's already being put in action that's why thousands have been evicted thousands have been evicted from their homes in New Orleans evicted without any recourse whatsoever because their property is not even owned by them. It's owned by the trustee called the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Look at that, look at that. Our international trade deficit grows every day and with the deindustrialization of America through the, and that's another thing y'all, for, for y'all who may not be realizing it, a lot of jobs that y'all have had it being outsourced, okay? Being outsourced over to Afghanistan and India and South America. So now, you, how you, really, now really how are we gonna pay the debt off now? Say it, say it, say it. The Federal Reserve has created tons and tons of new money while charging billions of dollars in interest. And I look at our situation the new bankruptcy, see, now you understand why they just passed the new bankruptcy law. Yes. See, put, it, put the pieces together here, people. Now that they're, now they're outsourcing your jobs, people are losing jobs by the thousands, so you can't make your payments on anything. And now, see, the, the whole purpose of bankruptcy was if my expenditures exceed my income, I'm qualified for bankruptcy. But now the new bankruptcy laws, since you have to have some kind of income to even file for bankruptcy, even if it's, it's a little bit. So that every time you do get paid, you won't see the check. It automatically goes to the creditor. It's called slavery, people. Thank you. We, our people, will be unable to pay their debts. And see what's going to happen. See, now, now look, how much time I got? Yeah, I got, let me, I got time to make this plain. What happens to a people when they can't pay their debt? What happens to a people when they're, when they're strategically manipulated into a predicament where they can't buy food? Y'all with me? What happens to a people when they're strategically manipulated into the situation where they can't buy clothes for their baby? Explain yes. that, explain that. Yes. These people now take on a character trait called the survival mechanism. Yes. Yes. And the survival mechanism says, I must provide for my maintenance by any means necessary. So just like in the situation in New Orleans, they sent pictures out showing black folk looting. The white folk found food, but the black folk looted. That's right. Pictures of white folk with groceries that they took out of the supermarket, but it says these people managed to find some food. But they showed black folk with groceries that they took out the same supermarket and said these people were looting. 
They weren't looting, man. They're trying to feed themselves. Y'all see what we're being manipulated to? Oh, man. And then to really top it off and make matters worse, we got a president who, who hears voices. <laughs> I mean, check this out, y'all. The man said that God spoke to him. That's what he said. He said God spoke to him and told him to invade Iraq. What you gonna do when the president hears voices? That's a bad state to be in. And the deep thing about it is he's so in tune with God all of a sudden that he is actually trying to make this thing happen over in Megiddo. Now follow how deep this thing goes. He's trying to make this happen in what is called the Valley of Megiddo. <clears throat> For those who don't know it, what is called today Megiddo is called in the Bible Armageddon. <laughs> he believes that this is where this battle is supposed to happen. What battle is he trying to bring to pass? What is wrong with this man? There's a serious relationship between the Bush family and the Federal Reserve. Yes, yes. And we should prepare ourselves for that consequence. We must prepare ourselves for that consequence. Understanding all this, brothers and sisters, it helps me to understand even better why we need to have our own. Yes. Yes. Every now and then, as I close, every now and then, stuff happens to reaffirm in my mind that I'm in the place that God wants me to be. I see things unfolding. Things come to me in my mind and my spirit, and I don't hear voices either. <laughs> they come to me in my spirit. I, I ain't saying, I'm, I ain't, listen, if God speaks to you and you hear audible voice, God bless you. I ain't knocking your audible voice, okay? I don't hear audible voices, I'm going to tell you now, okay? God speaks to me in my spirit. It's like an awareness that just comes alive inside me. Yes. You know, like a, a prompting to do. Yes. That's why I said we need to have our own economic and empowerment disaster relief fund. Yes. As I was doing my research on this this week, I even realized it even more. We need to put our funds together and utilize it and convert it to something of value while we can so that we will have as a body of people something to trade with. I don't know if you've ever seen situations in crises where a flood or a catastrophe happens People find stuff, they find their watch, they go find old jewelry because that is something to trade with. We don't have anything to barter with. Now those of you who've been to Africa, you know what I'm talking about because that's the system of exchange in Africa. I may not have money. I remember the first time I went to Egypt this dude wanted to make me a galabia in exchange for the cap I had on my head. Yes. Yes. 
You follow what I'm saying? That's called bartering. The cap I had on my head, I don't remember what it said across the front. Oh, I know it had, uh, had the unk engraved on it. That's what it was. And he liked that. He said, I make you galabia for your cap. I said, really? <laughs> to him, that was of equal value. You follow what I'm saying? What do we have as a people to barter when our time of need comes? Nothing. I'm a black man. That's why we're trying to kill you. But if you have value, if you have substance, or you belong to an entity or a group of value that has substance, that gives us a better voice. Now, take it for, I'm going to tell you like minister says now, take it or leave it. I'm telling you what's coming. Play around if you want. You know, it's like the situation where the, fro the frogs, we read the story of the frogs invading Egypt, and Moses and, and Pharaoh said, oh God, let's, okay, I can't take no more, I can't take no more, I can't take no more. Moses asked God to move the frogs. Moses said, when you want me to ask him? He said, ask him tomorrow. You can take that mentality if you want, just one more night with the frogs. Or you can say, it's time for us to do something now. We need to have our own. Don't be the slave that they're getting ready to make us all over again. I'll